a great welcome to Emil Neski. And you go to Liverpool and they're, they're rattling around, they're smashing you. I'm like, this is a bit different, but I like it. <laughs> can't not shake my hand and get away with it. Nicely. You can't be that arrogant and just walk down the tunnel. Did you ever um, try and sign Emil? Uh, no. And ended up with Kevin Davis. Very similar, not as good. I hope you're not listening to this, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> is there any club that you nearly joined that maybe no one knows about? AC Milan. And then last question today on the quickfire manager questions for you, Emil. Would you have liked to have played under Sam? Thank you for joining us for the latest episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. Hi, Sam. You've, you've been on holiday. Right. How was it? It was uh, fantastic. It was absolutely... My, well, it's my favourite place to buy. Um, probably go three times a year, you know. And, uh, and of course, it's probably the, the nearest place, six and a half hours, guaranteed sun. So... Uh, just about 26, 28 degrees, just the right temperature, you know, just full of Brits as usual. I mean, their business is probably held by 60, 60, 70% Brits is their business. Like, we're good at that, aren't we? We're good at supporting other countries. We, we want a, a bit, bit of sunshine. sunshine. So, yes, we do. So, yeah, but fantastic restaurants. It's a great, it's a huge, huge city on the beach now. You I've know. never been. I've never yeah. been, but you're selling it to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> so it was when, you know, really, really good. Well, thank really you for good. coming back to the cold <laughs> to, to be with us today. Yes. <laughs> Would you like to introduce our special guest? Yeah, it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, this guest. I think that uh, over, over many years, watching him develop as a youngster, uh, starting at Leicester and his career ultimately going to Liverpool and, and England. And... Uh, in my opinion, it was fantastic centre forward, which was a dying breed. The centre forwards of this type seem to be seem to be moving out of the game rather than actually moving in. Um, but uh, it's a great welcome to Emil Eski. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for, you. for joining us today. I always like to sort of start off by finding out what are you up to now. So now I'm uh, helping out at Leicester City Women. So I coach a um, bit of development and I help out with the boys under 18s and under 21s as well. Oh, that is amazing. We're actually yeah. filming this episode on International Women's Day. So that is wonderful. I, yeah. I, I love to hear that. How long have you been involved with, with Leicester Women? This is my third season. Yeah. yeah. We got promoted in the first season and then stayed up in the second. And now we're trying to stay up again. WSL is yeah. really competitive yeah. now. Very competitive. It's tough. You know, when you're looking at your Chelsea's, your Arsenal, that's where you want to be. Um, but it's steps. You know, this is our, like I said, it was our third season professional. We'd only just turned uh, professional. So to be in the top league and now fighting against them is, it's tough, but we're, we're enjoying it. It's moving quickly, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, this, I mean, some, I, I mean, some people probably dismiss this, but the size of the transfer fees, <laughs> You know, for the development of the of the women's professional game is, you know, it's, it's quite astronomical at the yeah. moment, isn't it? You know, the, 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 you know, there's money changing hands for players, and the, obviously the the pull of the, the the women's league is getting greater and greater. The the, the TV coverage and mm -hmm. radio coverage is getting better and better. So, and of course, I heard announced today, it's quite a few billion pounds. Is going to be donated by, or not donated by, given to all girls that want to actually play football to get the oh, opportunity amazing. now amazing. at their schools. So that's great for physical education because obviously, you know, how I've gone on about obesity in this country and about the lack of facilities for youngsters at school, particularly and, and in general, too many iPads, too many games, and not getting out, getting fresh air, running around playing football or whatever sport they fancy. So, uh, that's a big move towards mental health, mm -hmm. physical health. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, good luck and uh, let's hope the women's game keep developing. And so in the past, where have, you, where have your paths crossed? Uh, well, only, I think me, only as a, me as a manager, yeah. by what you mean. So I think that uh, as, as a manager, we'll have uh, come across uh, Emil, um, probably from Liverpool onwards, I think. When did you leave Liverpool? Uh... 2004 but you were, yeah, when were, was, you, when yeah. were you at Bolton uh, but I got to Bolton got Bolton up in 2001 yeah so, so it would have yeah, been yeah, then you know, so it would have been you know we come across each other because obviously once we survived the first two seasons we went on from there yeah. so that's good 
you know, and uh, Gerard earlier, and then who was after Gerard? Uh, Rafa. I, Rafa. I, I left at Gerard. Oh, Rafa, yeah, we didn't get on at all. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say. You uh, didn't get on with Rafa? Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> yeah, you can't not shake my hand and get away with it, Natalie. You know what I mean? You can't be that arrogant and just walk down the tunnel. As you know, at Bolton, they've got two tunnels. Yeah. So they, instead of the money just coming together through the one tunnel, they just turned that way and went down there. So, you know, just wind him up when I got the opportunity. It wasn't, wasn't difficult, to be honest with you. So, Did you, you ever know. try and sign a meal? Uh, no, no. I don't think the opportunity came around when it had suited me down to the ground if I could have got him. But I probably ended up with... Uh, 2000, it's probably still too good for us in that development stage. I ended up with Kevin Davis, who was, you know, very similar, not as good. I hope you're not listening to this, Kevin. <laughs> uh, not, not as good, but you know, he's uh, good. good. Um, now, Neil, this is the point in the podcast where I always just like to check on what Sam's up to with job wise. Okay. Um, there's all, because there's always jobs coming up. Now, when I saw that Watford had sacked Savin Village this week, I thought, <laughs> right, I'm going to ask Sam about that on the podcast. But then they put Chris Wilder in like an hour later. Were you approached? Did you speak to Watford? No, I spoke to Watford twice and I never really felt the opportunity was right for me. And uh, I think that there's many things that enter my head in an interview stage and many things that have to be agreed from the start now. And of course, if that means I don't get the job, mm -hmm. then I don't get the job. But if I do get the job, it means that it's it's not all my way, but enough of my way to for me to succeed. And if that doesn't meet the tick box, then I th thank them for the interview and kindly turn them down and book, you know, move on. But I have, I've had well, I've got been interviewed once, but the second time they came around, I just said it wasn't, you know, it wasn't for me because it was still the same board and I still felt that it wasn't right for me at that particular time. But uh, good luck to Chris. I mean, you know, great. I I'm very, very surprised what happened to him at Middlesbrough, mm -hmm. you know. And now there's been a massive turnaround because Michael Carrick's gone in as his first job and they're, and, oh, fantastic. And they're, they're in the playoffs. Which, so it is amazing in terms of the... A new manager can come in and, and change the fortunes, but you know Chris can do that because he's very experienced and particularly in that league now. And I'm sure he'll get Watford or try to get Watford up in the playoffs. When Watford approached you, does Elton phone you? Elton has phoned me. Yeah, that was the first time though. Uh, I had an interview down in London and uh, and uh, I was on my way back pondering about whether I should or I shouldn't need to speak to my wife when I got this call from from LA. Like you mean so. I didn't know whether anybody was taking a bit of the mickey at first, <laughs> like I mean, but he was very, very generous and very kind and uh, did make me think an awful lot more, by the way, about, about taking the job. And, uh, yeah, so that's my bit of fame. Elton John gave us a ring and said, come and, come and sort Watford out, Sam. I love that because you would think that was a prank originally, like, and then yeah, realised. No, love I, knew, that. I knew it was him because, obviously, <laughs> the phone number that came up, like I mean, so, I love yeah, that. very good. Um, on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, Neil, Sam was talking about how he nearly joined City at one point as manager. Is there any club that you nearly joined that maybe no one knows about or any conversations oh. you had? AC Milan. Oh. Yeah. Wow. When I left Liverpool, uh, when I was leaving Liverpool, I was speaking to AC Milan at one stage and then uh, ended up at Birmingham. <laughs> a big difference, difference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just asked which, which you would have preferred <laughs> Milan, Milan or Birmingham uh, <laughs> Birmingham is lovely of course yeah, we don't, yes, second yes, biggest yes, city it's great yes. yeah. well I'm from Dudley don't forget oh yeah are you oh, I was born and bred in Dudley you've lost your accent black. Yeah. I have like, I have too <laughs> I mean, to, no one understood you I was listening to <laughs> I was listening to Gabby Abonglor on Talk Sports on the way in <laughs> And I'm just thinking, because I could talk like that. I'm yeah, we didn't know otherwise. So, <laughs> well, what's happening today? Well, I'll eat what you have, do you mean? You know, and that's so, you know, I really had to get rid of all that. You know. <laughs> Is that I how you actually mix. spoke? Oh, I was like that when I first got to Bolton. I had to stop because all the lab, you know what it's like in the yeah. It's not as bad now as it was then. I mean, I was just slaughtered by my accent. I mean, <laughs> absolutely pelted. So, I, you know, I had to 
<laughs> learn to rein it in a bit, you know what I mean? I get that. I just brought a Scottish accent when I moved to Manchester when I was 10. Yeah, and yeah kids are kids are ruthless. ruthless yeah, absolutely. ruthless. Yeah, you're right there. Um, so you, you're at Leicester City Women just now and you work with um, the 16s and the 18s, you were saying. What's, um, what, what's your kind of opinion currently on, on how it's going with the men's team? Obviously, much lower down, I think, in the mm-hmm. league than we, we were all kind of expecting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, I think it's... Um... Needless to say, when you when you finish fifth and you're pushing, and you're trying to up, unstable the hierarchy, and then you are suddenly <laughs> fighting relegation, you're three points off the bottom. It's it's a tough one to take. But or were we punching above our weight? Possibly, yes. Um, we've got great facilities, we've got great owners, we've got great uh, stadium. The reality is, we can't really put. You you rarely can punch above your weight and keep doing that on a regular basis without getting more players in and, and some out. And I think it's going to be a, ter- I think they were saying there's going to be in the papers that there's going to be a, a, a massive overhaul of players. Um, well, they've already done that. I mean, I the amount of players they sold and didn't, it? did he get to sign anybody in January? Uh, uh, te- was it Tete coming January? Because uh, uh, he didn't sign anybody in the summer, did he? No. At all. Again, when you're not one player, but then sold selling players like mm-hmm. this, you know, I mean, it just, well, you know, but as well, financial fair play is you've got it's kind of a juggling ball. You want all the players, yeah, but they but they're millions ahead in terms of the players, the quality of player that Leicester have sold over over the years. Yeah, they they've should sold be. all the best ones. They should be. Um, you got. You know I mean, you, so Fafana's and still gone, managed Chilwell's to get the gone. top. Like you mean, and yeah. stay in the top top six. Like you mean, and then sooner or later, that policy not, cannot continue. No. And if you're not if you're not re- replenishing that with the like for like, yeah, it can be difficult. Southampton have suffered the same. You know, quality players sold on, Maybe. and then and then the board t- say to you, and this is where you get the problems in the board. Like, can you carry on doing that? Well, eventually that dries up. You get quality players who are good enough to play in the Premier League, and you sell them on to bigger clubs. Mm. It's not going to last. You're not going to keep doing it. No, you know, and uh, even if you, even if you scour the world, you won't keep doing it. Uh, you know, Ajax it, have their their policies, don't they? But they do. It's, but it's, I think it's a just totally different market, and I just think it's a totally different model that. I'm not sure can work in the Premier League. Are you confident Brendan will keep Leicester up this season? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I can't see. Uh, I can't see us going down. But again, happens to Leeds, it happened to Bolton, it's happened mm-hmm. to very established um, clubs. So, but I think Brendan, the club, and Brendan's got more than enough to um, to deal with that. So, talking about big money signings, I'd love to get your opinions on two of the big forwards that have come into the Premier League. Get two both to Liverpool: Darwin Nunes, <laughs> Cody Gakpo. What have you made of them so far um, as strikers? As strikers, uh, Nunes, I think he's better on the wing. I think for me personally, I, I'm not sure if he's ready to deal with back to goal right, right now in the Premier League. I think give him the ball so he's facing it, and then I don't think there's many can stop him. He's so quick and direct, and now he's coming into his own way, he's getting his head up as well. He started looking at sliding players in, you see him um, set up uh, Mo Salah, et cetera. And then Gagpo uh, took a little bit of time to get get used to it, but he looks a very promising uh, aspect for, for, for Liverpool. Again, another player that can actually, he scans very well. So when he's coming into feet, he knows whether he can turn or lay off and, and spin. So he's very, very good. It's very risky. Very risky to bring two players. Uh, uh, great talent. <laughs> Great reputation, but you bring two of them to <coughs> Liverpool at the same time. Never played in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. You have no idea whether they're going to fail or succeed. Mm-hmm. Don't care how much you've paid for them. Don't care who they are or where they've come mm-hmm. from. You have no idea whether they're going to succeed or not. I had Mario Jardel at Bolton who scored 264 goals in 380 games in Portugal and, and Turkey. Absolutely no chance in the game. Just couldn't go up the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Six foot three as well. Just not totally mobile different. enough. Just not, just not f- overall fit enough to cope with the, the pace and, 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 and the, the dynamism of the Premier League. You know what I mean? So Liverpool, you see them two guys next year and I'm sure next season they might be the making of winning, winning the league again because they've obviously deemed as quality players from where they've come from. But that settling in period, family, yeah, schools, wife, girlfriend, whichever it might be, right area, most important first and foremost. Player goes home, wife's not crying, you're okay. Player goes home, wife's crying, wants to leave. Mm-hmm. 
and that's where really where you where you look at the the integration you're going about is not settled but it's not settled because it's away from the football because yeah. more everybody comes into a yeah. dressing room and lads make them feel welcome mm -hmm. you know it's unless you're a bad lad then they'll soon find out and yeah. give you the give you the elbow but the, the camaraderie in the dressing room is very tight mm -hmm. but when a player goes home mm. you know I think I mean, that's something as fans we never really consider, like no. especially when you're, you know, as, as a manager yeah. and a player, if you're moving around a lot, how it impacts your family. But again, I don't think uh, only clubs are cer certainly now doing it, but I don't think they're really looking at that side of uh, uh, things either. Uh, whether your whether your family life is okay, whether you need to bring the like I think Jude Bellingham has one one parent's there, one parent's here because his brother's at Birmingham and he's in uh, that's Germany. Right, yeah, yeah. So one's there and one's there. So he's got, they've got best of both kind of thing. And I'm guessing they're both split and, and cross yeah. over again. Great parents then for splitting themselves up. And that and but there's something you have to do. And then, yeah. uh, it, you know, so his home life is, is fine. Um, but uh, again, not many people look into that and you're wondering why, why is he not doing so well? But as well, you, uh, you talked about the pace of the game. And that's an aspect that um, I think players underestimate when they're coming into the Premier yeah. League. Uh, they don't realise how quick and how strong. They just look at it and think, oh yeah, I can do that. But then when they come here and they see the training that we actually do, the running that we actually do, and and, and we've had players come from abroad and say, I don't run. Well, you are now. <laughs> 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 you're, you're doing line runs, you're doing this, you're doing bleep tests, you're doing all sorts. Uh, and they just don't, they don't get it. And then when they actually, after a year and they get acc acclimatised to it, you see the best of them. Is that even more of a compliment to Erling Haaland then? Obviously he's having a, an incredible season, but he came in and just hit the ground running in his first game. Well, yeah, I mean, what is he, 22? 21? 22, 23. And the reputation and the, the I think it's, I think in, when you're, when you're brought up, with a, a dad who dedicates his life to developing his son into a footballer, which it seems like, I don't know that, but it seems like the case to me. Mm -hmm. Then then it's like any anybody else. You're ready to cope mm -hmm. physically and mentally straight away because he's played in the Premier League. His dad, he knows what it takes. He knows eventually that's where he wants to get because, of course, he turned Manchester United down first and then obviously comes to Man City after that. So... And so he's gone away and he's gone to Germany and he's he's proven that he's he's got the capabilities, of course. And now they're the fortunate ones to pick which club do they want in the Premier League. Do they want the top? Do they want Man United? Do they want Man City? Do they want Chelsea? Do they want Arsenal? Do, who, who, who do we want? Because all of them, would, would if they could afford him, mm -hmm. would want him in their team. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's, he's naturally developed and then... Some you expect to struggle and don't, and some you didn't expect to struggle do. I remember mm -hmm. JJ Kocha, you know, world class JJ coming to us after the World Cup and uh, at Bolton. This was, and I think we played QPR away in the first game, and I had to bring him off. You know, and he's looking at me, and his eyes are like <laughs> glazed, going. Oh, too quick. Didn't realise it was that <laughs> quick, you know what I mean? And then obviously two months later, he was the you know he was the king of Bolton. You know what I mean? Once he got acclimatising yeah, and, yeah, and understanding and yeah. he was off and that was it you know and the talent came out so you you just you're guessing yeah. you know obviously you're guessing but obviously it's in their educated guesses and, uh, and and as a manager you hope they pay off mm -hmm. are you a, are you a Liverpool fan Emil did you grow up as a Liverpool fan yeah yeah. So I imagine you have been smiling all week then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> me, and oh, me, and, me and my family, yeah. I mean, you've been smiling as <laughs> well, you know what I mean? I am, Sam. Uh, I am. City I think, fan. Yes, uh, I am. There we go. <laughs> what did you both make? What happened in that 7 <laughs> nil game? I'm honest with you, it was... It, you know when you get them one games and you'd have been there where everything just clicks? Yeah. And then as well, I feel, I feel that they lost their head in the end, and it just they just capitulated. But everything just clicks. So you can get, you can go in a game and get seven, eight, ten chances, and probably score one, two. You like, and you're fuming when you go back to your stats, and you're like, well, how have we not hit this? But then you go into a game like that and have eight chances and score seven. Uh, it just some, everything just clicked for them, and it was brilliant to see, to be honest, because it was a huge game. Uh, when you when you're thinking of Liverpool. Who, pushing Man City for so long and then suddenly had to have a season like this. But still being able to 
I think they can get into the top uh, top four if they mm-hmm. if they win their game in hand. Um, and then obviously Newcastle have got a few games in hand that they can jump back ahead. But considering it, uh, we're looking at it as being a poor season, it's turned out. I think I think they're lucky this year that the, the Newcastle and Tottenham fell away. Are, are, yeah. The points level that those two clubs are at compared to Man City and Arsenal. Mm-hmm. A miles away, which is not normally the case. So it's easier, probably easier to get into fourth and third spot this year than it has done for a long time yeah. because of the, the results of Tottenham and, and Newcastle's ended up drawing too many. They haven't lost many, but yeah. I think they've drawn they've nine out of 11 or something like yeah. that, you know. So that's, they've sort of had an opportunity to catch up they wouldn't have normally got. So they'll, I think they'll take full advantage of that now. Yeah. But um, yeah, very, very, very interesting. Yeah, great afternoon for Liverpool. Shocking afternoon for Manchester United. Yeah. As a manager, Sam, what are you saying to those players? Because I think it's fair to say that in the second half, they essentially just down-tooled, especially Bruno Fernandes. So what are you saying to those players afterwards? How are you dealing with that? Well, look, there's, there's, there's two ways, really. I mean, there's two, there's, there's hard, the hard and get get back in tomorrow and let's let's re, let's re reanalyse it. Let's go, let's go through it. Bit by bit, let's go through. Let's sit you down and humiliate you. Humiliate each other behind closed doors. Just mm. shut would off that, and would say... That, would that get a reaction? Well, you don't know, do you? You don't mm. know whether it would or not. It's your decision, isn't it? Mm. Your decision on what you do, you know. So, or you just go... Uh, and you get a lot of criticism of this fight, I mean. If you haven't got a midweek game, I'll see you on, on Tuesday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Give them a couple of days off. And get the clear the mind and go, you've done so well for me. This has been a disaster. Second half, only second half, 45 mm-hmm. minutes yeah. where they collapsed. And then just go, go away and think about it. Go away and think about, you know, how you've embarrassed yourself, me, the fans, everybody. Yeah, so you've made your point about the embarrassment performance and or even then, how did you, and why did you do it? You, you know, And then just go, well, I'll see you on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Or you go see you Sunday morning, Ooh. but then you go Sunday morning and go bump. You hit him on the and then you probably give him Monday off. That's only me, anyway. What did you think of uh, Bruno Fernandez in in the second half of that game? But he's like that though, isn't he? He's temperamental. Where he comes from, it's his nature, isn't it? You know, you know, it's wave his arms about. I mean, you know, we had enough of that with him last year. Like you know, as if it wasn't his fault or when it, you know what I mean. So it, it, it's you know, it's the temperament and. Where they where they come from, they're naturally a bit more, you know, in terms of the the, the way they show their emotions and their hands and you know you know and all mm-hmm. that. Which as a manager you look at, it's the last thing you want. And certainly it's when it, it's when a captain turns up and looks and saying, "Will you stop it?" Nothing better than the player doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, doing they- it for the players' behalf and the, and the man. So what's your why are you doing that? You 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 were rubbish. Yeah. You Obviously, know, he, he were, is no, captain. Nobody was as bad as you were. So what, yeah. why are you waving your hands about? Like you I mean they're all in together. Let's get on with it. So it can be a particular problem when you've got that that sort of character, terrific player, done fantastic for, and and in recently been absolutely brilliant, Man United. Yeah. So you got to just put it down as a one off as a manager, and certainly, you know, the determination of the players in the next game will tell you how good they are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if they don't put it right straight away, then Man United are not quite as good as we thought oh. they were before the Liverpool game. I did feel like they were missing somebody mm-hmm. to grab them by the scruff of the neck, if you like, which is surprising when they've got Casemiro and they've got Varane and they've got players that have... But again, you're, 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 you're talking about Casemiro and, and, and players like that who have been in the best squads, who mm. generally are... The best players who are driven by success and they're driven by winning, they're driven by that. So they don't really need you bellowing out information okay. at them. Uh, and now they probably uh, need that that player, as in someone to really grab them and say, "No, no, no, come on, stop throwing your arms around, stop doing this, stop diving around, blah, blah. Let's get let's get at them." And they don't. You rarely see that now. You he might, he might really. be the joker mm-hmm. of the pack. Yeah. yeah, so he couldn't be. He might be the one that, like, has the dressing room laughing, yeah. comes in. No one's going to take him to look at me. <laughs> no, but just a brilliant player, technically brilliant and all mm-hmm. that. Might not have leadership qualities. You've got to pick out. You've got to pick out leadership qualities and decide, like, mm-hmm. you mean, know, and 
leadership qualities come in many forms, like you mean. But you can't put a you can't put the best player as captain if he's not a leader. Yeah. yeah. Because you might destroy his game. Because there are players who'll turn around and go, Why don't you shut your mouth? You're playing rubbish, aren't you? So what are you telling me for? Mm. So you get all that on the pitch. You know, you try and say, what are you on about? Yeah, but you, you know, you're not playing so well, are you? So you got, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge. So good week for Liverpool with the result. But obviously they also had the news that it looks like Firmino is going to leave at the end of the season. Yeah. Is he a, legend, a Liverpool legend? Yeah, too? he's not fantastic. Again, when you when you came in, everyone, no one really knew what, they, what we were getting. But then once he endured himself to the fans and... The way that he plays, and it helped the others, so Mane and and uh, Salah, because he was he was dropping in deep. He was the one that was uh, working in them little spaces. He would drag people out for them to make runs, and the nice the nice touches. I I like the little touches that he used to have. And but little... just recently, what we were talking about before, the Brendan signing, Rogers. Oh, was he? Took a year. Nearly two seasons for him to play like he played. Yes, yeah, absolutely right. Written off in his first season, waste of money. Why did we buy him? All that stuff that goes around in the game now, and then all of a sudden, finds his feet, finds his understanding, mm-hmm. get it, and then gets settled in wherever it might be, and off he goes. Like I mean, could have easily been sold on. Yeah, I mean so. You, you, you do, you, you, do ne- have you know, to now, that. now, bit of a Liverpool, bit of a Liverpool. You I know, know. And I always say, like that. the teeth, by the way. <laughs> I, I it was one of the first funny, I think, in the Premier League. That, you yeah. know, they're, they're turning up all over now, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, the yeah, white yeah. teeth. So, <laughs> you know, he, but he has the whitest of white, doesn't he? Uh, so yeah, full marks to him. Yeah, lovely touches. Yeah, vision. Yeah. The, the 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 little delicate paths, little in tight areas where yeah. it's most tight, you know, and it, yeah, you know, great link player, goal scorer, yeah. assists, you know. So and, he, and he's hard working. You you you'll he'll be one yeah. of the first ones running back to try and challenge and and to help out. So I think, uh, but we were saying about giving players time, especially when players are coming from abroad and they don't understand how quick and how strong and how passionate this 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 uh, the, the football in England is. You need to give them time. You know, you're looking at arguably one of the best to ever play at Thierry Henry. Didn't, didn't pull up trees when he first came. But then once he started to get to understanding and the fitness and etc., fantastic. So what was it like for you? If you, you're a Liverpool fan your whole life and then you sign for mm-hmm. Liverpool. What is it like signing for a club that you support? <coughs> oh, amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I had the opportunity to go to I think Villa, Spurs... Um, were interested, and then once I knew Liverpool because I, they they they'd um, been interested from uh, I think I was eighteen. Wow! Um, yeah. Um, so I'd always had interest anyway from sixteen. Uh, I think Blackburn were interested when I was sixteen, um, but I wanted to play for Leicester. I wanted to prove myself at Leicester. So from eighteen, got into the first team at seventeen, playing at eighteen. Liverpool were interested, but I wanted to carry on with. Um, playing for Leicester and try and win something with Leicester. Did that, went to three cup finals, won two of them. And then when I, and then we knew, I knew that the next challenge... That was under was, Martin, was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Martin, yeah, yeah it was fantastic. Um, then the next challenge was, what what do I want? I'm, I'm in the England squad. Can I push for some, some other trophies higher up? Maybe winning the league. And that was Liverpool. So when they came, when I knew there was in, there was nothing else. You joined at a time where Carragher, Gerard are there. The stories that, that come out that they were tough on new signings. Did you ever experience that? To be fair, they were. I was twenty two when I went there, so Carol's the same age as me. So and Stevie's three years younger than me. So I think it, no, no, it, it would have been when they were more established. And that's when they, they they were captains, they were leaders, etc. Mm-hmm. That's when it, that's when that probably came in. When I when I first got there, it's fascinating because you go for, I go from Leicester where uh, training is is high tempo, etc. But it's not because the squads are small. We, there was fairly fairly they would, we didn't tackle really because we didn't, didn't want injuries. Um, and then you go to Liverpool and they're they're ratting around, they're smashing you. I'm like. It's a bit different, but I like it. <laughs> so, 
So, but again, I love I love the way that you 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 train the way you play. So yeah, yeah uh, and then you see the tempo and everything, and then we went on to win a lot of stuff. So it was good. And you strike up an incredible partnership with with Michael yeah. Owen. You play him with him at Liverpool and with England. The mm-hmm. fact that you were doing that across club and country was mm-hmm. that an, an an extra? How much of a benefit was that? Yeah, massive. Um, again, I, I was lucky again because I played England under eighteens and Michael six uh, sixteen at the time, two years younger than me. Um, and he came with our, our age group. It was that good. And so we went to the Euros and we just struck up a partnership from then and it just carried on all the way through. And then obviously playing for England and then playing with Liverpool, you work on things and it just worked really, really well. Um, it's fascinating that you don't have partnerships anymore. No. Which is weird. Yeah, um, yeah, it is, yeah. But it was, it was, it was something. Sometimes you don't have a number nine now. It's no, called exactly. a false number nine. <laughs> exactly. But I think mm. it's going to come back round. I think it's going to come back round because I, I uh, obviously being in coaching now, everyone wants to, um, everyone wants to try and get two up front. Yeah. The only thing with playing two up front now is the younger age groups only play with one up front. So when you go to the, to the, uh, say the 21s or, or the first team and you want to play two up front, you've never learned that. So you're both making the same runs. You're both looking. Mm. Whereas we used to work off each other. We had uh, we had an understanding that if you're going in here, time will tell you. If one's coming short, the other one's got to go along. If this one's coming here, you've got to go underneath them. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. So there was all different things, that tactics that we learned and they're not really learning that now. So um, it would be something that will have to come back around again. If you think they're not learning that, you should, you should see the lack of learning on defending oh, yeah, that's yeah. going on in the game but, because but, defending has become... Something you're not supposed to talk about. But do you remember when uh, we had Sol, we had Tony Adams, we yeah. had uh, Keown, we had the mm. Gareth Southgate, we had yeah. we had all these defenders and they were they're fantastic. The, the Sol was one of the toughest ones to play against, etc. Mm. And then we had Rio, etc. Rio was a was a standout one because he was good on the ball. Um, the rest they'll say they weren't so good on the ball; they couldn't play out from the back. And then and then there was this big push of we need players that can pull out from the back. Okay, cool, cool. So there's a big push for that. Come with these players. You come with John Stones, etc. And then they're saying, "Well, they can't defend." No. I was like, "Which one do you want?" And now we're going back round and saying, "No, we need uh, we need we need." Defenders that can defend. We need someone who's going to go and head the ball. We need someone who's going to put his foot in. We need yeah. someone who reads the game well. And that's where it's sense the danger. But that's I mean, that, and, and that's what that's my fear of academies now because mm-hmm. I think academies are letting players go who are great defenders mm-hmm. but can't play out from the back. Yeah, and that's my greatest fear, which is wrong, like you mean. So I mean, they're teaching they're teaching defenders to lose the ball in their own final third and saying it's okay, keep doing it, <laughs> but it's not okay. No, no. Because you're, tra- you're training people the wrong way. It's perfect preparation prevents poor performances. Okay, mm-hmm. early doors for me. Yeah, I had yeah. It, I had it at Bolton. Yeah, I was you, at you Bolton. Mean? I was at Bolton uh, at the end of my um, career, and we played a lad uh, left centre back. He gets the ball, and we're bottom of the league. Yeah. So we get the ball, and he's looking, he's looking, and um, no one's showing for him. We're bottom of the league, so no one's showing for him. And he and he turns out, gets the ball rubbed off him. Uh, crosses it they score this is like five minutes in gets the ball again not long after that looking looking no one's showing again tries to do the same tries to go across turn, turns the lad run flashes it across just miss does it three times in a row they brought him off at half time and he just didn't understand because in the in the academy they're telling yeah. him no it's good to make mistakes you've got to learn yeah. from that yeah, but not in, not in the first team. Yeah. So back up to the other end of the pitch in terms of scoring goals, mm-hmm. Emil. And we're talking about you having a great partnership with Michael Owen. In terms of current players, England-wise, do you think Kane and Rashford would benefit if they were at the same club? I hope it doesn't happen, Sam, but <laughs> if they were? <laughs> um, look, I think uh, having Kane, had to, if, if he did go to United, would be a, a fantastic addition because he's a goal scorer. He'll all, he always finds a way to score goals and different types of goals. So, uh, and that's something that they, they possibly need. Whether Rashford plays out wide, because I don't know if they will play with two up front or he plays in the 10. Um, we've seen him playing from the left uh, right now and he's uh, he's flying. But I know Rashford can play up there through the middle. Um, but yeah, he would be a fantastic addition to them if, if and that's someone that would uh, definitely get them goals. The manager's changed him where he runs, mm-hmm. Rashford. Yeah. So it's like everything else. 
you've got to get behind the opposition defence to score, so how do you do it? Now, every wrong manager is scared to death about playing a ball in behind the full back four. Because they go, oh, a long ball. You know yeah. what I mean? So... You know, Man, City, Man City's goalie plays the best long balls in the yeah. Premier League. So yeah. I mean, but he don't yeah. get any stick, does he? Like I mean, so so he's learned that Marcus Rashford is not great into feet, mm -hmm. but he is great running in behind. So there's two things you've got to change: the player on the ball wanting to play it because he's frightened he can't do it with the right area, and the player up front to make the run. Mm -hmm. So if I'm playing with Emil Esky, I will play it to him if he makes a run. Mm -hmm. I won't play it to him if I don't see the run. Yeah. So you need to get the run before you get the ball. Like, you know, you can't do the ball, then the run's too late. So Marcus Rashford has started running in behind more this season than I've seen him do in the last two years. And players are looking to play him in. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, in the box, his head inability on crosses yeah. and scoring. It's got a leap it, on It's him. something that I haven't quite seen. And I mm -hmm. hope he can keep that up because Eddie goals are a massive, massive bonus. Mm -hmm. To your over a goal, over goal score record, mm -hmm. you know the more Eddie goals, the more types of different types of goals you get, the the be better you're seen as a top quality striker. Mm -hmm. Talking about other strikers in the in the Premier League, Emil, that are doing well this season. Obviously, Mitrovic at Fulham. We've mentioned Fulham yeah, about how yeah, they're they're pushing. Great, yeah. What do you make um, of him? How how highly do you rate him? It, it was a funny one because he, he he'd go and score. 20, 30 goals in the Championship and then couldn't do it in the Premier League. And now he's found his feet in the Premier League. I always thought that there was some, something in him because he's a big lad. He's different to what a lot of defenders would have come up against in the last yeah, five, ten years. Mm -hmm. um, because everyone wants a false, like you say, false nine or, or, or someone who's really good on the ball, etc. Uh, but he holds the ball up, plays playing, and then he gets in the box. I tell you what, they know just to put it in there, and he's a handful. He knows how to put his body about. He knows that knows where to position his body, even to bring a ball down, or to go and get a winner, winner header. Uh, he, he's he's been, he's done fantastic to change that around as well because we all know mentally it could be challenging if you haven't done it before. That can I really do it? He never questioned himself. Yeah, anyway. yeah. I mean, play, players like. Are deemed about their aerial ability and about their strength in the air, about what they can do in, in, in terms of crosses. Um, and not given the credit for the rest of the game. Yeah. Like Emil would be strong and quick, good in the air. But f nobody gave him the ability that he had or the credit for the ability they had in terms of the hold up play, mm -hmm. bringing other players into the game. You know what I mean? And, and, and you've got Ivan Tony at Brentford, who's given it a big lump, you know. But he's much more than that. Mm -hmm. But if you want it, it's the greatest tool of all. It's why Man City couldn't cut. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. He played. He played in Man City's half often. Didn't play out from the back at all. Brentford, the manager, and just went. And then Pep comes out and said, "Well, we, you know, all we got was this long ball because he's." As usual, most managers try to defend. Well, it was the best tactic every, anybody's Still seen at Man City this year because they just couldn't cope because he yeah. won every header and they won the game. Mm -hmm. We've got some great strikers in the Premier League. You know I mean, so year, the big we? big guys are actually coming back. So mm -hmm. yeah. from even Pep's got rid of the false number nine and gone for Alan. Yeah. You know, six foot four. You know, so actually the big guys are actually taking taking an opportunity to come back. Like, I mean, yeah, we so had, we played Southampton recently and Che Adams. Yeah. There's all sorts of problems with the way that he holds the ball up, the little pockets he gets in turn and played played uh, Alcaraz through um, yeah. to score. But he's been doing that with Ings as well when Ings was there. Um, so, yeah, he's, 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 come, he's slowly coming back around. Yeah, it feels like yeah. it. It really does. Um, again, sorry, going back to yours and, and, and Owen's partnership because it's so it's so fascinating, so incredible to think back to that time. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm guessing that the Germany game, the 5-1 oh, yeah, Germany yeah. game that you both scored in, is that up there with one of your, or is it? Is that it's your that, that's, best that's, moment? Yeah, best moment. Um, Where was that game played? In New York. Yeah. Uh, away. <laughs> uh, we lost we lost the old, uh, last last uh, last game at the old Wembley, 1-0 uh, Diddy Hamann. Um, that was when... Was yeah, that Kevin, Kevin resigned? Yeah, yeah, that was when I watched that game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then to obviously go for Sven's first competitive game uh, in Germany 
to then be 1-0 down seven minutes in is tough. But um, th- you'll know as well, Sam, that you score goals at key moments in the game. It can it can, yeah. it can can play on people mentally. So they've gone and they really should have been 2-0 up. Then suddenly to go into halftime, we just scored before halftime and we were 2-1 up. So that kind of dented them, came out again and scored again. That's 3-1, they were finished with me. We knew, um, and we had a good team. We had a really good team then. So, and then obviously get the fifth one was nice. That were Man United. (laughs) Yeah. Touch and go, who's the better side? Probably Man United had the best chances in the first half. Didn't take them. Liverpool scored just four and a half time. Mm. Liverpool come out in the second half and scored just after half time. Man United, (laughs) gone. It's mental. You know, in in the space of five minutes, it's the you know the game, they collapse like mentally. Obviously, they're not supposed to do that. But who you know, yeah, used did. to say that all the time? The first five minutes of the game, and the for, and the last five minutes of half time before half time, and then the first five minutes, and then the last yeah. five minutes. They're the, they're the ones where you really got to focus. They can kill you because you come into the change rooms mentally just drained from what has just happened. You mentioned Gerard Houllier there. You've worked under some some big, big managers. I've got some quick fire questions Go for you now about managers that mm-hmm. you have worked with. So, who was the best club manager that you ever worked with I, and why? I, I would say I would say two if I can say. Of course. Um, um I would say Martin O'Neill and Gerard Houllier. Uh, Martin was fantastic. I was a young lad, quick, strong. Knew what I was good at. He just said, "Go on, go and play. Go and do that." And it it made me feel. Uh, so on a, on such a high that I'm doing well for him, he wouldn't tell me to do anything different. Just do that. And and as a young lad, sometimes I you can fill young kids with too much stuff in their head. Oh, I need to do this. Do when you get that, do this. No, you just say go on, go and enjoy it. Go and play. I need to get down the wing. See how many times you can take him on. All right, cool. Go and do that. And then obviously going to Liverpool, you tactically is just another level. Uh, so uh, Gerald was fantastic with that. And and more like a teacher so you and I was young I was 22 so he still needed that nurturing and he was fantastic at that as well Who was the best international manager you played with? Ooh. I would say Sven or I, I, I didn't play under Glenn Hoddle but I trained um, but I'd say Sven um, it, it's similar to Julier where tactically he was very very good um, and so when I went onto the pitch, I knew exactly what he wanted from me. Uh, there was no grey areas, etc. So I would say so. What was tour grip like? Because really... I met the pair of them quite often. Like yeah. they, they seemed to have a right relationship between the pair. Of them. Yeah, I, I, would, I didn't really have much to do. No, with them, so quiet. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. 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 What is the strangest thing a manager has ever asked you to do, or what have you <laughs> that you've seen a manager do, like tra- in training or in? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come to you on the way home. Yeah, yeah. You'll go, oh, I should have said that. <laughs> I not that, to be honest, I haven't I did many, many You're a good man. He's a good man, isn't yeah, he, Sam? Yeah, he's, he's, he's keeping good. these. Yes, yeah, he's, he's keeping, keeping these. Keeping his cards close to his <laughs> play, chest. Play, there. Pl- probably play centre back or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> did you at any point? Yeah. Well, Martin wanted me to play centre back. I was like, well, you've got a young lad, young centre back playing, um, but who's um, on the bench. You might as well play him, because if you don't know he's if he, if he's not good enough, then you can get rid of him, rather than playing a forward at centre back, which I had played. Um, but that was like we was uh, I was at Wigan, and um, it was the last five minutes of the game, last game of the season. We needed to win it, Sheffield United, and I ended up just being centre back and just heading and kicking everything away. It's a bit different to start a game. So, yeah, yeah. Who gave the best team talks? Hey, Martin. Yeah. Um, he, he he was very he, he was a big so, thinker yeah. and when you go on the pitch he, he, you say things like uh, which one of you is going to pick your mate up if he does wrong because someone's going to do wrong here but we've, we've got 10 others that are going to try and pick him up to be the best he possible you're like yeah yeah so you're, you're you're ready for battle when he when he gives them little talks oh I love that I love that and currently and, and I'll get both your opinions on this who is the best manager in the world right now? World. In the world the right world. now. The world, well, we don't... <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can do Premier League if you want. Uh, well, it, we wouldn't know. 
too oh, much about some of the yeah. some of the South American so managers. In England, then? Say in England, yeah. Okay, best I'd manager say. in England right now. Well, Pep, for what he's done continuously, uh, year in year out, um, and taking that club to where they are now. You agree? Yeah. He's going to get some stick now selling them players to Arsenal and say, when <laughs> is he going to get some stick about that? By the way, and all the fans are going to look the same. That's the old pals out there. Look what it's cost us if we don't win the league. Right under the cosh, I think. Where do you stand on that though? Because he, I guess City would say, or he would say that they wanted to leave, that he didn't want to keep on happy players. Well, you're right, but you're right, but like, you know, you've got. You've got to think about it, haven't you? You've got to think about it. So you, you wouldn't sell to any of your rivals? Close, like close rivals? Well, it's, it's, it's his buddy, isn't it? Yeah, true. You know what I mean? He's had, yeah. been with him for years and years now since he's, since he packed in. Like, I mean, he's got to help him get the job at Arsenal and now he's got two, two quality players to go. Zinchenko's you know. the real loss, you know, because it goes back to what you were both saying about the, the natural leader on the pitch. He is, yeah. or he is, although not captain, he is a person that would pull a team yeah. around that would shout that would pull you up yeah, yeah which is a strange one for me because you can play le left back and, and left midfield but left back particularly when the when the when they lost um uh mendy and mm, then yeah you know and they're selling him and that they, well no left back they haven't really got a natural left back we've got no senior left backs no <laughs> it's fascinating with him because they're playing sure. the center half there at the moment aren't they yeah. it's a center or, or we're playing now a false ah, left back with probably. bernardo silver <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then they let the other two, four back go on loan. Ciao yeah, Cancelo, yeah. So Cancelo, that was a, that was another, another Z unusual Z one. But I'm sure he came in as a number ten, and then ended up left left back. He did, yes, he was, yes, yes. But well, he uh, plays in midfield for his country, doesn't he? And the last question today on the quick fire manager questions for you, Emil: Would you have liked to have played under Sam? Yeah, I definitely would. Um, suited the way that I played as well. Yeah, I didn't mind putting myself about so. Uh, yeah, I would have. Nice way to finish today. And I'm Appreciate grateful. it. Yes. Thank thanks very much for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you Emil Husky. Having... Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you as always, Sam. Pleasure. Are you, See you again are you, soon. Are you here next week? I'm here next week. Yes, no problem. <laughs> I always think hopefully you're here next week unless your phone goes. You never no, know what's going to happen in a week. Know, <laughs> I think it's too late this year now. Okay. If anything's going to happen, it won't be this season. Okay, well, I'm happy about that, obviously. Because yeah, that means yeah. we'll have no tippy-tappy football for the rest of the season. <laughs> thank you for joining us again for this episode of No Tippy-Tappy Football, you, brought to you by William Hill. We'll be back next week. <laughs>